like we're working on a, a, a freeway in Houston, for instance, we wouldn't have to go through all these different permitting pro this process coordinating with different agencies. It's a very delicate situation down here, very, very de delicate environmentally. That's why we're working, we have to work with these agencies. And they're, they've been very, very cooperative. And there's things that they, they bring back to us. And we're kind of, it's, a, it's a constant coordination, but it's something we're working through. But it's certainly because of the, the sensitive environment down here at 187, I mean, at, at, I'm sorry, at 87 at 124. Yes, sir, go ahead. Did you say right. that the intersection would be, would be moved further inland? Uh, yes, sir. The, the, like 124, uh, 124 and 87, you see there's two curves uh, that goes east, east to north, and and then mm -hmm. the west. So we're gonna we're gonna bring the one that's outer side. It's gonna gonna be shifted. And I had an, uh, the slide PowerPoint that's going in. It will show you a schematic of what we what we're doing. And I, I put the slide on on that, so you can you can see that. The whole curve is not getting in. The outer lanes that were uh, that were going east to north, that, that those are going to be pulled in. Yes, sir. I got a question about. Well, you just talk close to it. It's good. it's good. I got a question about the elevation. You say seven foot elevation. If we have a mean uh, sea level of say six feet. Does that mean that the actual raise of the highway is going to be like one foot? Uh, I, I'm not. Yeah, that that's right. currently we are at elevation five. We are going to seven point five, so that's another two and a half feet of so elevation. Highway taxes will be raised about two and a half. Yes, sir. Any questions? Okay. My question is, it's going to be a while before the permits are come through. Is, is it a smart idea to keep patching the road in the area it is with sand? Is there any way that we can use like a different you know, material like clay or something along those lines? Well, uh, we, we have some restrictions from GLO what can be used. Uh, I know Lee and, and, and William are really familiar with that and we are thankful, so thankful to county for giving us their sand because uh, uh, right now GLO would not permit any other material. Uh, I, I did propose using some limestone and, and some riprap material to go uh, and that would be more stable uh, but GLO has restrictions on what can go on the beach and they in fact one time asked us to provide a beach quality sand uh, which I, I don't know what the standards are for beach qualities, <laughs> to be honest with you. But uh, thankfully, our partners, uh, uh, Lee and, and, and uh, Michael Shannon, and uh, they, they said, yes, you can use our sand. And so we, we are using, that's why we introduced the non woven uh, filter fabric to hold the sand better and, and, and give us that time frame till, till the project lets and we, we can have more coordination. Thank you. Can you give me that? Yes, sir. Okay. yes I'm uh, Matt Summers with Peninsula EMS, the ambulance service down here. And I appreciate everything TechStop's doing. I've seen them out there working. I'm also a part of High Island Fire. So usually we're the ones that are down there trying to stop the traffic before TechStop gets there. Appreciate all the efforts. My question is, everybody's saying, you know, it is an emergency route. It isn't. We only have two ways off this peninsula. If that ferry shuts down when tides go up, winds are strong, that's our only way off. The ambulance service, we're having a hard time, along with all the other emergency services down here, fire and EMS. I've had the water up there four foot deep, and nobody can get off the peninsula. I guess I'm asking from all the emergency services down here, how long is it going to actually take? I mean, you have a start date in May, or, or that's when you're going to start. When, when is it going to be completed? Because all of us need to coordinate our efforts to help each other out down here. Well, um, the broad, you're talking about the start date is, is May, and it, it may take uh, two. Yeah, it takes like two months before the uh, letter of authorization to begin work and contractor can mobilize and, and start working. 
we have some, some interest shown by a lot of big cons construction firms in, in this project, and, I, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they can, I, can, I can't give you a solid date when they're going to be able to complete the whole work, but we, got, uh, we just finished a project on 146, eight mile long roadway, and they were able to complete it within how many months were that, John? Five, Five to six months, but I'm not going to throw that number out there because there's more challenges here. Because we have to haul asphalt from a long way. They can't go bring it on the ferry. Uh, they have to bring it to, uh, to uh, I 10. So it's a long haul. So it's, I'm not saying it's going to be five, six months. I can't give you a date they, they, right now. But uh, as soon as we get closer to the hand cross, I can give you an end date. But uh, sure, we know we can, one thing we can give you is the start date. I also have one more question. Yes, sir. On the elevation, you're saying you're going to bring it up two foot? Yes, sir. Two and, two, two and a half foot. We've had water up there four foot deep without a tropical storm. High tide with strong south winds. This is mean high tide with a good strong wind. How is that going to help us? Do we need to look at maybe raising it a little higher? Because EMS, that's how we get off. Fire, that's how, that's how we get off. We had a mandatory evacuation. We have multiple elderly people here with oxygen concentrators. Power goes out, they're trying to leave, they can't. It's taken all of our resources to try to help them get off. The county's been gracious enough to actually say, hey, if it gets deep, you can put people in the back of dump trucks where we can go through the water. I mean, that's unacceptable if you're critical. We have to do what we have to do, but if we're going to put that money in, why not go a little higher so it can actually be an evacuation? Well, that's that's so noted. But you got to understand. I mean, this is this is far above these guys. Yeah. I mean, I mean this is this is done way up the chain. Yeah. And he said based on 36 hours of the of the hurricane hitting in the Gulf and the, the mean tide, it doesn't seem high enough to me either. No. However, you know, we go try to start trying to change that. We'll be 2025. But it's just bad. It's spending bad money. Well, but but it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> which, which of the four sections has the first priority? The intersection. The top priority is the intersection, because but they they will start the sequence of construction. We have to look at the sequence of construction. But yeah. But that's our top priority. Uh, my question is, why was the designation taken away as an evacuation route? We will look into that. Danny has noted that, taken the comment, he's going to search that and look at Dr. Austin and find out what it is. We can hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Danny, uh, Danny has taken that note and he's going to look into that and give you, give you guys a response on that. Hi, uh, my, my question is twofold. Uh, one, how much of the project, the eight or nine miles, uh, is affected by the Corps of Engineers permit? And uh, two, is there a reason why you can't start a uh, predominant amount of the project without that permit if that's not affected? For example, if the only area affected is by the curve, can you not go ahead and do the other part of the, uh, the project? Well, the project is, uh, it's an, in, uh, it's a, uh, what IP uh, is an uh, individual permit on, on this project. So I actually had this question. Uh, the department's actually gone out and hired a consultant to help expedite this whole environmental process. And I asked the question last night, uh, where are you at with this? And he said, you know, I've actually gone to the Corps and I've asked them to speed this up. But uh, he said, they take about 30 days they have, a, they have a lot of 30 days to be able to provide comments to review the whole plan set. They have 30 days and they give it out to Texas Fish and Wildlife, um, uh, GLO, uh, about three or four different agencies. They all have equal amount of time to, to provide comments. Those comments come back to the department. We have 30 days, but we've been taking about 10 days to get those comments back and they have another 30 days, all those other agencies 
to get a rebuttal to our comments because of their comments. Is, but it's an ongoing, it's a concurrent process. And it actually, it's, it's all happening at the same time while the design is going on. So that's not going to delay the process. But the area down here is, is so sensitive, like Danny was saying, with the piping clover and the, uh, the, the, you know, the turtles. I mean, that's, that's the challenges we're up against. Yeah. We're not in danger. We no. <laughs> <laughs> wetlands are human beings that's the, computer, that's the issue. Is human life less important than wetlands grass? Is all my question. No, sir. Uh, uh, well, well, why is the roadway being held up? Because environmental has concerns about wetlands and GLO has concerns about wetlands. And unfortunately, that's a government that's, issue. That's, that's not the that's, federal government. That's not Jamal and them. I mean, we, that, those are very logical questions, but, you know, I mean, the GLO, one of their partners, was not allowing them to put sand taken off the beach onto the beach because it wasn't beach quality sand. I mean, this is what these guys are dealing with. So it's, you know, welcome to government. Yeah. Um. I've got a little bit of experience of working with the Corps of Engineers and, and in my prior projects I have created what's called project boundaries and which allows you to do part of the project at a time so if you can avoid uh, a portion of the project so if you had phase one was the first six or seven miles and then you, you had phase two as being the actual project that you're permitting through the Corps of Engineers you could actually go ahead and start on uh, the first phase of the project and also uh, the Corps of Engineers has uh, a expedited permitting process even if it's a 404 permit for emergency type situations and special certain special circumstances and i would think that they could um, expedite this process for us to get that 404 permit if it's only you know because there, there is human life at risk here and uh, that's one of the special circumstances that's listed um, on the website i actually asked the guy that same question between me and him. So it's an obvious question to me and you, but why hasn't this been brought up before? He said, there's actually, we're working on actually speaking with the Corps at the moment. That we, it was 8 o'clock last night when we were at a public meeting at the uh, Lamarck area for the 45 project. We were going over these things. He said, there's a guy working with the Corps Engineers right now about this. He's working as hard as he can. They have several staff members, not just our own department. They're hiring several people to try to explain this as fast as they can. It's a, it's a tough process, but it's they're going as fast. Now, I'll ask about this expedited process, but I mean, this is a consultant that's doing this, and you better know about that, but I can I can get some contact information from him out if that's available. You got a question back here, Jamal. Yes, it's my understanding that you are going to start the first elevation at Rollover Pass, go 2.1 miles, and if you would raise it again, that would be your next phase. Is that correct? Until yeah, but, you uh, get to 124. Yeah, but uh, like Joel was saying, that uh, it's going to be phased construction, like a yes. construction phasing. Mm -hmm. It's going to work out. So they are prioritizing the starting at 124. They can start at any end, but we will prioritize to to start work at 124 because that's... And come backwards? Yeah, come backwards, yes. Okay, and I'd also like to make a comment that there's not anybody in this room that doesn't believe that that's not raised high enough. That's fine, but here's our options. It's going to be better than what it is now, mm -hmm. and we're going to live with it, and then we'll just have to do it again, as bad as that is. Uh, no, that was that was not brought that in their one of their recommendations. Their recommendations because we had right away. And they can't hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, that was not one of their recommendations. We're following their recommendation and uh, their expert of this. Uh, 
this thing, what they're doing. Uh, at Textile is a transportation agency. We don't have ocean experts. So, so that's why we hired them. And their, their recommendation was to, to, to bring that back. As, as, and and, I, and I've, we have noticed that on the uh, westbound side, it doesn't get flooded. The westbound side is normally when even we have a lot of sand on the, on the eastbound side, but westbound kind of stays open. So, so that's what, that was one of their recommendations, plus the elevation height, plus the armoring and, and putting, uh, putting those uh, big blocks of stone over there. That, I think everything is, is, is that is going to be added and it's going to help a lot. Well, that just seems like a band-aid to me. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the solution later down the road. Just, just my thought. I have a question. Um, do you have any plans of putting like granite next to, I mean the work you're doing right now with the concrete and all is great, but you know like in Galveston where they have the concrete blocks and stuff, is there any plan on doing that type of thing on that curve especially? Because even if you move it in, it's still going to erode. Do you mean temporarily or, or when they raise the, raise the road? I mean like now, after you finish what you're doing now. <laughs> Like when that's done before it, I mean, it's just going to come apart again. I know you're working hard at it, but it is just going to come apart again. Yeah, yeah uh, like uh, we are on our on our permanent solution, we are putting two by two foot, three four inches blocks on on the one foot of concrete padding uh, to, to protect that roadway. Uh, currently, on the temporary, no, we're not we're not putting granite block because it it takes a lot of uh, efforts to, to transport that in and uh, so so that is our, our maintenance forces are not capable of, of doing that so a little bit of extra work to begin with will save you a lot of work in the future I, I yes ma'am yeah <laughs> okay we got one more over here I just uh, I'm wondering why a bridge hasn't been considered. Uh, because of the access issues, and uh, like if you put a big bridge, I, and I heard this comment long uh, from a lot of people about the bridge, and we did share that with, with our consultant as well when they were reviewing this. There's going to be a, a there. There's going to be a lot of access issues. You raise it that high, there's a lot of driveways that that would be that you won't be able to, to get on the bridge. So, and then the right of way issues, environmental issues. You're you're, you're talking about a, a lot of issues with bridge. And and what they suggested was the most viable and feasible solution uh, in in a timely manner, because uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's giving us a 36 hour H minus 36 hours to to evacuate and. and when definitely when you have a big, huge hurricane, it's, it, it's, it's, it, you, you, there's an evacu evacuation, mandatory evacuation, it gives you ample of time, that elevation, and that's what, what they, they analyzed, and they thought that gives us enough time to evacuate the island. And that's what they thought with the hike. So what, that's what they thought with the hike. <laughs> yeah, they, they did, uh, the, the, the Slides are going around. They took the uh, 36 hours at I. They took all those those in consideration when they proposed this elevation to us. Well, yeah, I've, I've got a question. None of y'all have yeah. brought this up or mentioned that it appears like everybody was going. You said this, the highway work is going to start at Rover Pass. What about Rover Pass? The county's going to fill it in. The last storm, I have videos water coming through the pass two foot two and a half foot above the meat where is all that millions and millions of gallons of water an hour going to go you're talking about the you're talking about the rollover pass bridge, bridge? yes sir whenever y'all whenever the county fills that in you got millions and millions of gallons of water an hour in and out every storm that will have nowhere to go I have a, I can show you a, a video in my pocket right now of the water coming over the four-foot seawall at the end of the past property. 
you're talking two foot. Okay, that water's already two, three, four foot above me. Where is that water going to go? When you build your road, you fill the pass. It's going to flood the entire area. And I asked a general question that's and it's not official, don't take a word, but uh, this, the water is supposed to be redirected around. So it, now I asked that. And, Around right to the Galveston Bay. So, it, okay, we got a question here. Uh, my point and, and is just to add one more thing. That's not a tech start project. Uh, county, I think, uh, county is supporting that, and GLO is supporting the closure of rollover pass. Tech start has got no. Your highway is going to get washed out when it floods. Okay, so noted. You can't, you can't do anything. Here to tell you when the. When the permit's going to be issued, and when the contract's going to be let, and when they're going to start. Um, I guess my point is, and I, I think it maybe it's already been been mentioned around. Um, we see four foot tides on the regular, on the regular. We're not talking hurricane. We're not talking massive storm. We're talking a high tide with a south wind. We all live here. We all see it. We all deal with it four foot of water over that curb, and y'all are raising the road two foot, spending all this money with all these impact studies to raise it two foot. I fail to see how this is a viable solution to our problem, to our everyday problem. Not a storm, not 36 hours, high tide. Well, uh, that's what the ocean engineering and, uh, guy analyzed that. That's what the, we hired the consultant. And, and believe me, you're living on the island, but every day my crews are out there. So I know that. I live through the same pain. I, I send my all my staff here to, and over the Thanksgiving holidays, the, over the Memorial Day, they were there but are every, you every day. Aware of this? Uh, but what? Uh, say what? As the expert, expert that we hired, is, are they aware that that happens on high tide? Yes, they are, and 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 uh, that's what their recommendations are. And I've I've been hearing that from our our staff uh, on on the road. And uh, Lee, if you get, if you know more about that, but it's more it's the most I've heard it goes up like six to six inch to a foot. Let's talk about <laughs> Let, let's talk about elevations and tide. It's been said a number of times already today that there's four foot there's been four foot of water at the curb or on top of the pavement at 124 and 87. That's not true. There oh, has yes, been four foot is. of water on that pavement. On top of that pavement says hurricane. Hold, hold it closer. Please. There hasn't been four foot of water on top of the pavement since Hurricane Height. When you get your warnings from emergency management from the county that we're gonna have a three and a half foot tide or a four foot tide, that's four foot above zero. And that's ocean levels, okay? That ground is already at an elevated level. The ground, the, the center line of the highway today is at five foot. So a four foot tide is still one foot lower than the center line of the highway. Okay, so you do have wave, wave driven, wind driven waves that run up, that runs up onto the highway and washes over. But even a four foot tide is still <clears throat> one foot below the center line. So he's going to raise it to seven and a half feet above zero, above Means zero three. elevation. Okay, so that's two and a half foot higher than it is today. So at a four foot tide, <coughs> the, the pavement will still be three and a half foot mm -hmm. higher than a four foot tide. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. true. Yes. I disagree I have pictures. About six months ago, I have a lifted F-154 by four, and I was trying to go, I was trying to rescue an individual that actually went off the roadway, and it was halfway up my doors where the waves were hitting. And I had to lift it. Once again, yeah. that's waves from wind-driven waves that's rolling up on the beach. That's not, you know, we've got to keep in mind. It's still an issue. It's okay. still a problem. I mean, I, I understand you, we're just wanting to know to pass it along up the, if a wave hits your vehicle and you're trying to leave, Correct. it is going to wash you off the road. Correct. We just want that information to be passed along if y'all can. But, uh, it, it does it that, but you got to keep in mind the relativeness of these numbers, okay? When you say four foot of water on, on the uh, on top of the highway, that's four foot of standing water. That's not wind-driven waves, okay? So the, the highway is going to get raised to 
prevent from you know water being standing on top of water. There's, they're they're going to make a protection, like they just said, of granite and concrete on the outside that should dissipate some of that energy, the of waves being driven up on there. Okay, but there there is going to be a there is going to be a time when you know, like he said, at, at, there's going to be a time 36 hours before landfall that that highway will become impassable, and you got to keep you got to consider that. You got to understand that, and you got to prepare for that. And you can't expect, you know, that there's going to be a passable highway at all times. Storm. All storm. Okay. I don't want to beat a dead horse. Sure. Okay. But why? I'm going to ask again. When will we know why the designation was changed? I will, I will waste research that when I get back to that. I think that's crucial. It's, it doesn't Do play into the that? funding, though. I mean, it, it's prioritizing. We know it's a priority. We're working really hard to make sure this is moving forward. And it could happen a lot sooner. We don't know we, until, we, until we're further into the, pro, into the process. We know it's a priority. We're working really hard. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Back, back there. Oh, we're, we're working really hard on this. Go, go ahead. A, a layman's answer, a general answer, is that all, how, all hurricane evacuation routes run perpendicular to the coast and away from the coast. Okay, whereas this, you know, 87 runs parallel to the coast. Correct. So just by, even though it is the only exit route that you must take to get away, if you look at TxDOT's maps, all mm -hmm. designated evacuation routes are perpendicular to the coast and away from the coast. So 124. So 124 is? 124 is. 124 is the evacuation route, not 87. Oh, yes. oh, okay, and that, that's the difference. It's a, it's, you know, of course it's the only route away, but... If you know, I-10 is not an evacuation route and on all, you know, it, it runs parallel. Every, any, all the evacuation run, routes run perpendicular in a way. But we, we understand that it's not going to impact the, the designation. We understand it's a priority, and that's that's why we're moving quickly. We know, we know it's important. Well, with the designation, I was going to add one thing. Uh, government is really good at looking for excuses. So the GLO, I promise you, saying, oh, it's designated a recreational highway. You know, let's look at the quality of the sand and this clover over here. And, you know, we don't like this, uh, what the granite looks like because it's not native. And they rely on the excuse of, oh, well, it's designated a, a recreational highway. You know, when they're forgetting that they're putting the environment, you know, and plants before people. You know, and that's something we just can't allow them to have that excuse. So it's got to be designated an emergency item. You know, it's, it's public health, public safety. People die. People are worth a little more than, than what granite and sand looks like. So, you know, that's something we can do today. That's a state issue that can be done right now. There's no excuse about it. Thank you. And David's going to look into that. He's going to contact Austin to find out what's, what's going on. I just had one other thing. It was saying it's going to start in May. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we should try to do it a few months earlier if possible because it's going to be a nightmare. I think the idea of a camera at the curve would be very helpful to all of us. Yes. 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 We have a different section that handles that as our transportation Thank operation. I'm oh, sorry. That's a different section that handles the cameras. We, you see like the DMS boards on the freeways. That's handled by our transportation operations section. And we have discussed that in the past. And I'll make sure I'll find out. They were, I know they were looking into it last time I talked to them about it. But I'll, I'll find out what, what's, what, what the status is. And, and yes. That's something you can actually, what, the way I understood it was you can actually go to HoustonTranscar.org right. and actually pull that camera up and see, okay, if it's passable, yes. if there's, if there's yes. any issues. Yes. One issue they did have was because of the, uh, um, the, the darkness. When if, it's, if, it's, if it's late at night, it might be a little more difficult depending on the lighting. Um, but there's, we, have, we do have some temporary cameras that, we were, that they were looking to also placing. So I'll, I'll find out and I'll get with Exactly. Yeah. So, so we'll follow up on that too. Okay. Anybody else? When you give your consultants to have them coming out to look at the job, are they just looking at pieces of paper in your charts, or do they actually make a trip down here to see what's going on to look at it? It's a lot different on your than it is and actually seeing it. They, they, they come out here, they make, they, they make several field visits uh, to, 
and that's how they know about all the access that's causing a lot of water flooding on, on the reach one. They looked at some of the access, and some of those access are not even permitted. They're not. And, uh, but those accesses are, are also so causing some flooding. And uh, that's why, that's why they, they're, they're here. They're, 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 they surveyed the whole place. Is right now. Uh, the Corps of Engineer office? No, but uh, they, they, she's talking about the NJA or consultant. And so what I understood you to say was they divided that eight mile stretch up into two mile stretches four two mile stretches yeah and study that and then we're going to do a dune dune improvement in connection with the raising yeah. and limiting the beach access in each of those areas yes sir yeah. where's this consultant's office at that's more driving he's yeah, well, uh, yeah. yeah. okay. who was the engineer lja lja was the consultant i don't know where their office is they're houston the senior vice president of lja has a house down here Bob Worsham, who is the coastal engineer, grew up here. They're familiar with the beach. They're not just from Kansas City or Dallas. <laughs> they actually have a state down here. I used to work for them before this project. <laughs> we also have a textile uh, commission. Commissioner, yeah, textile transportation commissioner. Uh, yeah, Textile uh, Transportation Commissioner that lives uh, that has a house on, on the island as well. Question, y'all are, are saying that you're going to look into all these various points. Is there a way, um, Mr. Atfeld, that you could put these various points out on your website and give us updates on a monthly basis or set a time? You said, well, I'll get that as soon as I can, like set a date so that the people that are here can look out on that website and say, this point was brought up, it's supposed to be done now, and this is the update on it. Otherwise, I mean, we have this meeting right now, and you guys say all these great things, and things are going to happen, but we don't have any way of monitoring it. I guess what, I'm Mr. Apto. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so, I, I don't know what points that we're going to update you on. I mean, like the raising beyond 2.1 feet, it's not going to change. No, no, we can, like, go, we like, can do hundreds like, of things. Like the evacuation routes and that. that the two, I was going to say, the two things that I take away from this is a camera and an evac evacuation route designation. That's the two things I feel like I can help you all with or try to help you with. Yeah. Beyond that, this meeting was about setting the record straight from TxDOT with regard to when the permit would be issued, when the contract would be let, when construction would begin, and approximately how long it would take. Because that was what was people were buzzing about in confusion. So I wanted to make sure, you know, all this other to me is great questions, and I commend all of you for those questions, but unfortunately we're so far, we, they, are so far into the path that we must accept it or, we're, you know, like she said, live with what we have, and I don't suggest that. I say take what we're giving and, and then complain and say I told you so if that's the case. Well, also, I just wanted a way for people here to be able to check. I've done a series of info sheets, but it's always changing. It's, I mean, it's, it's a fluid process. Sure. So what I put on the last info sheet, I think I did one back maybe like late last year. Um, and it, I looked at it the other day, and several things have changed on it. So we don't have a website typically for web, like website, like a web presence are going to be for our larger like freeway projects like 290. Um, 288 and those types of projects. I, like even for 45 or wide, we don't have a website, a de designated website. But that's why I tell people to go ahead and call me. It's I mean I can, like I said earlier when I was when I was speaking to you guys, you can you can call me and I you know I have a, I can go run up to one of the one of the one of the folks whether it's design, uh, whether you know just whatever the case may be, we can get that answer for you. Uh, but I will work on a new info sheet that I, we don't send them out to all the residents. We send them out to the elected officials. And then it's up to the elected officials' offices to, to send those out. We send them like to the to the key folks and some and some of the community folks that that uh, we have on on a list. But then, well, you know, I'll I'll work on that probably within the next few weeks, and I can send that out. And you can get access to that. It, it'd just be a great great way to have a central place that everybody. Can we also have and we're going to do that for you. We also have Project Tracker. Uh, it's on it's on text.gov, our website. And it's called Project Tracker. You can look for the project, but right now, I mean, I saw, I looked at, that's why I was telling you it's a fluid process, because so I looked at it the other day, and it has, it has some good information on there, but a lot of key like, dates, it just says TBD to be determined. And so it's just not very good information for you guys. So 
that's why I feel, just feel free to call me. I don't have a problem with it. It's, you know, I cover, um, we cover six counties in, uh, in, the, in the Houston district, but it's not a problem. I, mean, I get calls from different folks. I won't name names. But I get calls and emails from folks consistently about 87, and it's not a problem. We can, you know, it's, it's, we can address those at, at each and every time. It's not, it's not an issue. We can go run another, I mean, most of the folks that are working on this are going to be in my building at the district. So I can, you know, typically I can just go and ask them really quick or give them a, a quick phone call, I'll call you right back and say, this is what I know. Like I said, it's fluid. It, to have a web presence would probably be having a, we, you know, we, we just don't have the resources to update a website every day. But also follow us on Twitter. I'm constantly putting that information. Anything I get, I'm putting it on Twitter. I'm putting, you know, whether it's photos, any updates, um, any, any developments, it's on Twitter. And is that right like, below Trump or right above Trump? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we don't do Facebook. The only Facebook presence we have is is, the, is our statewide Facebook page, and we we typically only time I will get stuff posted on there because that that impacts the entire state. So only time I'll you know it's, it's a big development, but that's what we're asking. I, and I like what the commissioner said earlier. The social media. I do social media, and some of the things I see out there are just a lot of inaccurate information. So don't rely on what you see on Facebook or next door. Call us. It's not a problem. And I've seen people put. Put my name on on next door and on Facebook. Like call Danny. I just spoke to him a few minutes ago. This is what he told me, and that's very positive. As opposed to when we get folks that are just putting information out there that's not accurate. That's that's where we have problems. And you know we're here we're here to address those those needs and those concerns. And so feel free to give me a call anytime. It's not a problem. When right. is the start date? When are they going to start? The, the, it not was permits permits, permits, permits in the spring. Expect to let it in sometime in May. And then start sixty days thereafter. Yeah, sixty days after the day. And that's what she said. Well, like like I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, though. I mean, I've seen in, in my time at TechStot, I've seen things happen where it moves a lot quicker. I mean, there's sometimes where we'll we'll say there's this is a, a you know a kind of an estimated, anticipated time. Next thing I know, we're moving a lot quicker than I thought, and that that's a possibility. So we could be in a better place, you know, saying that later on this year we have some better information. We can actually come back to you guys and tell you and update and give you some really, really good news in our <coughs> So if we're not going to move the road inland, is there any plans on moving the Gulf out? What I mean by that, I knew I was that. What I mean by that is putting a system in that will help with the road. Well, I think we that their 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 plan is to slope the, the edge of the roadway, concrete it, and granite it to, to protect that. You can't re it on sand They're doing it to McFadden down there. Well, uh, the re, uh, re uh, nourishment um, was, was also one of the recommendations of, of uh, the consultant. And uh, that is going to be, if they are pursued with that, that's going to be a separate uh, project uh, to do that because it takes a longer time on permit. Um, I know there's been some talk about um, partnering with county on that because I think Palm County has a permit uh, that just expired in December of 2016. They're in the process of getting a permit. So there has been some high level communication between the county and, and our, our upper management about uh, looking into that. Currently, we don't have an AFA or um, like advanced funding agreement, but there, there has been some communication with, with, uh, with county judge and, and, and uh, high ups of the county and our, exec our executives. All right, one more question. Is your PowerPoint presentation online anywhere that you're passing around? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't have that online, but I can share it with uh, with Seth, and, and he, uh, if he has a website, you can, you can Yeah, you can all, if, uh, if you haven't liked it already, please like our Facebook page. It's um, Daryl Abdel, Galveston County Commissioner, Precinct 1, uh, and I will share that information on our page. Um, and, oh, so, sorry to repeat myself, if you'll please like our page on Facebook, Daryl Abdel, Galveston County Commissioner, Precinct 1. Um, I can share it on there, or um, if not, if you want to come up to me and bring me your email, or I can hand you my card and get you to email me, I can send you that information. Thank we'll, you. we'll get it sent today. Yeah, and then we'll have a link, and we'll put that link up yeah, so that sure. you'll have that. We appreciate y'all coming and taking your time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all of y'all. You guys give up. Right? You're awesome. We care about y'all.
Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, Joe, for your time. We appreciate it. And, and again, thank you all for the constructive questions. And um, Jamal wanted a DPS here. I'm just playing. <laughs> But I told him it was okay. We were having Constable Rose and Constable Pettaway. No, that's not true. Uh, but thank you all. Sixty some odd thousand dollars, which prior to last year, that's that's higher than most of the years in total. Uh, next question is from y'all. Where's this money going? Why do we have a stockpile of it in a bank account? And that's uh. Not easy to explain. <laughs> Not fun to explain. Um, we have a set of guidelines on spending this money, what's allowed and what's not allowed. And there are very few things that we can spend this money on. Right? We have to get creative. Uh, right now what we're working on is probably spend close to $700,000 on restrooms. Sounds like a lot of money, it is. I thought that too a couple years ago. Uh, until I start getting involved in the program and I see how the money is spent, uh, see how it's broken down and where it has to go to. So the current projects we're working on right now, uh, the permanent restroom that's going to go on Crystal Beach Road, y'all have heard that for who knows how many years? Eight years, Lee? Okay. That has hit the ground. We had, we've been having meetings. We have entered an agreement with uh, a design, I guess it's a design firm, architect. Uh, so he's going to be presenting some stuff to us, I think, maybe, right? So we'll have some stuff to look at. We'll tell him what we like, what we don't like, um, and he'll move on to the next phase. The timeline that our uh, county architect came up with that is possibly to be done with that restroom by beginning of next summer. Again, I know it seems like it takes a long time, and it does. but. That's the projected date. It is on the ground. It is running. Um, second project we have going are mobile restroom trailers. We have three of them, and those have been requested for a long time. Maybe not as long as a permanent restroom, but we're starting with three units. They'll have three stalls in each of them, and we'll also have a rent station at each one built up on a deck. Uh, those will go out six or seven months of the year and then they'll be hauled off during the off season so we can do maintenance and keep them from rotting out on the beach. Uh, we don't know how long those will last. That's a question that we're just going to have to figure out and decide if it's something we want to expand on if we want to buy more. Uh, they're certainly going to be a lot nicer than the porta potties that are out there that overflow all the time. They'll be hooked up to sewer, uh, running water of course, and uh, It'll be a nice amenity for our, our visitors uh, to come in and enjoy, and that way uh, business owners aren't hearing complaints about the porta potties all the time because they, they are nasty. Um, we're fixing to enter, uh, sit out another bid for the porta potty service. We have expanded the, the number of times a week that they are serviced and cleaned, uh, so those will stay a lot cleaner. The security that we pay to put out on the beach the sheriff's office. We started last year, that program's running good. Um, last year was our first year and there was a, a few obstacles we had to overcome, but this year it's rolling really smooth. Um, oh, Mark. <laughs> it, it's running good. Um, we do have some complaints, but we're still working on them. Um, can't think of any other major projects we have going on right now we're trying to get these really rolling before we start something else um, we're always open for ideas a lot of times we tell you no we can't do it and that's just because of the GLO guidelines that uh, are set to what we can use this money for won't allow us to do it but we're always open to ideas the money is there to be spent for our beach and we're happy to happy to accommodate it um, if we're allowed and just to add to that, um, the, we, the commissioners have to approve, the commissioner's court has to approve the spending of those funds, not, not part of the general revenue fund. And when we took the idea of let's get three, three portable restrooms and try it out and see how it does, they wanted to spend money on one restroom. And I remember without mentioning names, but some of your good county employees spoke up and said, 
you know, a, a real pilot program is not one restroom. Let's do three. And so that's why we're doing three. We are considering it a pilot program. The, the rent of those things was almost as much as the purchase. So we thought, okay, if we can get three years out of them uh, with equal to one year's rent, we're way ahead of the game. So we know they're going to rust out. We know they're going to not be any good at some period of time. We're hoping for two to three years, but we're, we're way ahead of the game. The manufacturer uh, says five. Five. So we'll see. Uh, but these are some serious elements. Another great thing that's going on that you all may know about is the, is the, the security. We, we have additional deputies on the beach from the beach sticker program. We've been purchasing side-by-sides for them to, up to uh, use in connection with their patrol on the beach. Um, I think we bought initially two. No, the Sheriff's Department, we bought four right on. And then have we bought two more? Not for the Sheriff's Office. Okay. We bought. We initially bought four units for the Sheriff's Office, and that's still what they have. And then we had two for the ambassadors, and we've increased the ambassadors' fleet by two more. Right. So we have a total of eight units, four for the Sheriff and four for the sticker ambassadors. Right. Anyway, that's... So yes, ma'am, Ms. Cole. And I also want to mention, too, how wonderful I think the new machine is that breaks the beach. Yes, we bought a 50-some-odd-thousand dollar surf rake to pull behind the tractor. It disturb, disturbs the sand a lot less. Uh, picks up the trash and puts it in a hopper, and that way if it's a lot of trash rather than seaweed, we can actually dispose of it um, and put it in a receptacle rather than it going up in dunes or something else. Um, we actually are hoping to buy another one maybe next year if we continue to like this one. It's the same machine that the Galveston Parks Board used. They have nine of them, and they love them, and I think we've been happy with ours so far. And one more thing about that I want to, wanted to bring up to everyone since we just had this tragedy here on the beach are, are the warning flags and if it's a possibility that they can be put on the vehicles. On the well, and when you remember we talked about on the galvanized, the new signs at the beach in, access entrance points of putting, doing a flag system? We did, and at the meeting it was Kurt, Kurt who actually brought up putting them on the UTVs, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we looked at that and we're going to be looking at it again. There are a lot of, I don't want to say issues, there's a lot of logistical issues that we have to look at when we get into a system like that. Um, certainly not saying it can't or won't happen, but it's not going to be something we can just go buy flags tomorrow and start putting them up. But I, I, I beg to differ a little bit because the Sheriff's Department runs the Beach Patrol, right? So, I mean, the Beach Patrol puts out flags. No? No longer. Beach Patrol is... Is the Galveston Park you talking about the city? Yes, the city. Yeah, it's not the Sheriff's Department. It's a Park Support now. Oh, don't worry. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe our captain could get from the Beach Patrol director every every day, because he has a, a, of course, I don't know, maybe the tides and currents are different from there to here. So, anyway, we're going to look into it. We understand it would be a great, a great public service and hopefully save lives. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, William, it's a great service that y'all are doing. The beach looks great. A lot less trash. We're thankful for you greatly. Uh, like the lady mentioned earlier, we've had a lot of tragedies down here as far as groundings. We had, just in the last two days, we've had two pediatric near groundings and one end up. An adult was a fatality. Water Rescue, they've been doing an awesome job down here at fire departments. We've actually, in the last month and a half, have had 17 water rescues, 14 near groundings, and two fatalities out of that. Is there any way those funds could maybe start putting slowly some lifeguards out here, like Galveston? Because, I mean, our beaches, they are getting extremely busy. Could the funds be used for that, maybe? Uh, it's been discussed before, uh, actually before me. I don't know where those discussions went to. Um, I'll be happy to look back into it and see why, if it was shot down, why it was shot down, um, and what obstacles were faced when it, when it didn't go any further. Ms. Diaz is here. Do you have something you can add to that? <laughs> She's our parks director. Um, it is something to look into. We're not sure 
Again, we have to ask the GLO every single time we spend the money, and the commissioner's court also has to approve. Um, lifeguards all across the beach, picking out the designated areas, that's a huge undertaking, and it wouldn't be something that we could just all of a sudden do, and it, it, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it would be quite difficult to fully man Bolivar Peninsula with lifeguards. But we can look into it if that is the direction. But as far as the funding, we know that the pay sticker money could be used for lifeguards? Potentially. I mean, have we ever asked the question? We've never asked the question. Well, that would be our first step. And we can, we can do that, huh? So, I mean, we just asked the question. We were going to maybe get beach sticking parking program in office uh, and, and try to add it on to the restroom being built, and but they wouldn't allow that, you know. So they're, 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 they're really finicky as to what they allow it to be used for, but but uh, we'll ask that question soon. I mean, like this week. Yes, sir, Constable Rose. Hey, Commissioner, I uh, have two deputies up here, and they answer this question all the time. You know, we have the sheriff's department over here, to assist them all the time. But come with the beach sticker program, that's allocated just for the sheriff's department. But my deputies have been getting called out on weekends all the time. So why aren't they included in the beach sticker program for security also? You know, they're county employees. I feel like Jamal now. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. Um, I don't know if y'all saw the article a couple of years ago in the paper about the city of Galveston using beach sticker fees for police in various ways and from an administrative cost. Um, they got deemed and had to pay a lot of money back. So we just have to be very careful because if they're on their regular patrol, just regular doing their duties, and they get called in say on the beach to handle something on the beach, that's fine. They could get reimbursed, but only for the 1.5 hours they're on the beach. So then it becomes a timesheet where your guys have to fill out a timesheet that says, this is what general fund pays for, this is what beach sticker pays for. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. okay I'm talking about the program itself. It just includes the sheriff. Or working the beaches. Why aren't they included also their county employees? It doesn't matter to me who works beach. Yeah. So you're, is your question like, can, you, can we get another side-by-side that constitutes and help work the beach? Right, right. They just want to be included in the program. That's, oh, oh. that's their question to oh. me all the time. Why are they not included in the program to work the beaches? Because they do work over here in Bali. Oh. Well, I think, and, I and think that's we're, great. You know, we're pulling deputies. All over the county, and we got two deputies over here, and they're not even there. And it's hard to get that. And, 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 they, and they know these people over here. Well, that should not talk. I mean, that, that shouldn't be a problem. I brought it up before, and I just got stonewalled on, so I thought I'd bring it up in the public nope. session. <laughs> yeah, I never heard that question. You hear me, Rose? I said that was a different commissioner. Okay, Michael, you got Yes, okay. Can the beach sticker money be used for like for like um, uh, cleaning remaining pilings up in the beach, especially rollover pass and east of there? Because there's still a lot of pilings from left left over from Ike that are in there that are submerged that a people. Lot of that are, is all well debris. Yeah. 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 Um, but there's pilings out there too. You know, Especially we, right across from Canal City. I don't know if we can use that beach sticker money for that or not. Uh, I mean, there's there's left there's even left over the big uh, sausage that we had on the beach. All the connections and all that sausage is still sitting by sausage, sausage, all around. On the sausage is referring to the sand socket of GO2. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The big sausage. Yep. Yeah. And also, is is there any uh, or is there anything being done to build the dunes further to the east? From where they are, not with beach parking sticker money, and I don't know of any current projects that are going on right now. Okay, all right. I just wondered, where does that money come from for that? Uh, there's different grants 
um, and some of them matched by different government organizations. Uh, there's, there's not just one set uh, pot of money that it comes from. And then Jan says that was supposed to be FEMA money after the hurricane that was to clean up all of those pine. Every bit of it. All three piers and all the debris left. Two and left the rest. Yes, ma'am. Um, there is a question about where these restrooms are going to be located because we live on a two and a half mile stretch where there is not a single porta potty, but I counted 200 people on the beach yesterday. And what's happening on the weekend is people are coming and digging and making their own and driving away and leaving. There are four out there, there were yesterday. We don't have a restroom. These families, you want the parking sticker money. But you're not providing, we don't have restrooms for them. The law enforcement is kind of shoddy. We still got a lot of kids driving on the beach. You know, we got nine year olds on, on golf carts. I'm assuming you're up on towards the east end, Captain Gilchrist. No, 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 no I'm by the school. Oh, okay. Uh, there are no restrooms. Boyd is, it's the boy, the next one's an hour. Boy does not have a restroom. They used to. They got to go Boy does right now. Oh, Boyd, Boyd has one right now. It's a seasonal restroom. It goes yeah. up in May and comes out in October. Well, we don't have any. We, we marched the beach yesterday, okay. and from barrel 36 to 62, there's nothing. Okay. We'll have we'll have to look at that. We put the restrooms, the porta potties, on roads that have buyout lots on the corner that we can put them on the buyout lot. And and there's a couple other things that were looked at when they decided where to put these porta potties. That has not been revamped in a while. Um, I was asked to show you this. This was in the paper. I They're saw that. building these beautiful restrooms in Galveston. But, and I understand we're a different situation. So but, the, the first thing I can say about those are those if, if the ones I'm thinking of are permanent restrooms that are built. Uh, they're not built on the beach. We can't build anything on our beach. On the sand. Those are are, are those on the seawall. Sea those are on the seawall. Sea sea right. And we don't have a we don't have a foundation, a base, or anything like that to put something like that on. But that that's that's sort of the same thing that these trailer restrooms are gonna are, are gonna do. They'll, they'll only be there for six or seven months out of the year during the busy season. But that's really the only time we should need them out there. If you only put them down where there are already restrooms, you're not helping no, out the rest. That's, that's that's not the case. That's not the case. Actually, um, two of them are going. Two of the three are going where there's not porta potties currently. And then once we expand, we can just continually put them in other locations, not and just till then. We, like I said, we'll have to look at the lots and see how we want to expand those locations. If we can even expand those locations, depending on where our buyout lots are at. Yeah, we should be at least be able to get a porta potty in one. The, the, all the porta potties you see are on are near buyout lots. So if there's not a buyout lot around, we're going to have to look for other options. But that, that's how they're all set right now. So that, we made a note of it. That goes in with the camera, the highway designation, the PowerPoint, and now porta potties between 36 and 62. Thank you. Rob? Yeah, I just wondered, uh, uh, last year at the community meeting in uh, at Crenshaw, you commented about the new signage. Yeah. Could you give us an update on where that stands? I, I think the signs you put in are great, uh, but are there still more to come, or are we done with uh, that? Uh, you're talking about the big fly swatters? Uh, <laughs> that's what they look like at first before we put the signs on, big fly swatters. Yeah. Um, no, the, the we had planned on eight, and that's what's up. Uh, we haven't looked at putting any more up. The beach barrels, uh, I wish I would brought my calendar. I believe we're up to three times a week this time of year, maybe four. Okay. I'm pretty sure we're up to four times a week in the summer. Uh, that's That should have started in May, maybe June. I should have brought my I wish I would have brought my calendar. I, I have porta potty schedules, beach barrel schedules, hand picker schedules, and it's hard to keep up with what's what. But uh, it's three or four times a week right now. I believe it's four. So bringing up the trash situation, can anyone tell us how many citations have been issued for the junk? I, I, 
can't give you that number. I don't have the slightest clue. Uh, that'd be a sheriff's department or maybe a, a JP question. Mike, do you have anything you want to add? Okay, so that you guys, I mean, people give me credit, William credit a lot of times, but I just want to let y'all know that the people that really pull in a ton of money for the program are actually the, the beach ambassadors, and they're all absolutely fantastic. Um, Patty and Mark are here in attendance today. I know you didn't probably want me to say your name, but they're, they're fantastic. We've got Colleen and Mitch. Uh, they work for the program. Glenn and Stephanie, uh, Michael and David. And when I tell you that these people are all stand-up people, they, they've all got tremendous backgrounds in one thing or another. And they, they do a great, great job out there on the beach for you trying to collect this money that goes into the program to pays for the things that you guys want to see get out there. So although we got to jump through some hoops from time to time on certain things, I'll, I'll, I'll get right to you. Um, to, to get those things that, that William works awful hard for and, and you know, our new commissioner, he's been excellent as far as backing the program on those things too. Uh, but I, I do want you to know that the reason why the program pulls in the kind of money that it pulls in is because of the people that are up and driving up and down the beach. Hey Mike, is there any way the ambassadors, or do they now, carry the blue garbage bags with them to hand out? They've been carrying them, yes sir. Yeah, we, we actually have to order more bags this year because of how many they give out, and I, I view that as a good problem to have. Yeah. They hand them out, and then the sheriff's deputies on the UTVs also hand them out. <laughs> and then Keep My Hover Beautiful hands them out. And, and um, our vendors, our ice cream vendors, or, or, or some of the other ones, they ask for them now, and they hand them out. So. I, I just wish we would actually see more of them full of garbage. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Uh, yes, um, on Facebook someone was saying they brought a, there was a, a garbage detail from the uh, prison. <laughs> Is there any way we could get like more volunteers or more, I, I, just, I wish that there were more people we could pull in to help with picking up garbage or if we could coordinate somehow more or if there's a website we could say, well, the county's going to be picking up this day, so volunteers don't have to focus on that day. To be, you know what I mean? I guess the hand pickers you're talking about are uh, a contract we have with TIBH, and they come out 12 times a year. They charge us $4,500 a service, but they come out 12 times a year, and uh, we have it. We look at our calendar a year ahead of time and schedule them roughly, roughly every other week. Um, unless it's a holiday, we try to juggle that schedule of where they come in after a holiday. Um, as far as getting uh, more volunteers to come out and help, that's something y'all are more than welcome to do on your own. Actually scheduling volunteers and relying on them from the county standpoint, I, I don't know that that's, uh, that's very viable. Um, Keep Bolivar Beautiful is a great outlet to try and do that, uh, whether it's scheduled or just getting the equipment or saying, hey, we want to do this, can y'all help us out? Uh, I think that's probably going to be the best option for something like that as far as volunteers go. Can't we, uh, when you do the budget, budget the pickers more often, like every week, once, especially like when you have cheap week, the Memorial Day weekend, but to but, and then they don't come till after the next week. That particular week. instance was my fault. I overlooked Jeep Week or I overlooked Memorial Week when I scheduled them every other week this year. So them being back to not being back to back that week was my fault. Uh, but it really, it really, and it's not just the beach doors. A lot of stuff is coming in from the water. Yep. With the topic. It does, and and hopefully that new machine we bought, hopefully that can help some of that because what he does is he tries to drive down the surf line where a lot of, especially the small debris is, and hopefully catch it before it gets blown into the dunes. Yeah, we drove yesterday and it looked great, and then the tide went out, and there was all this, all this stuff on the beach. It was not. It's a never-ending battle. You said what we collected this year, so far, what is the total amount in that pump? Total amount in that, oh, I haven't looked to see what's gone out versus what's come in. Last I checked was roughly 2.1 billion. So we do have money to spend. We just got to be able to find ways to spend it where the GLO approves it. 
And Michael, what's your goal for this year? What you think we might do? <laughs> Put me on the spot. Um, what I'm what I'm hoping that we do is is just just shy of about seven hundred thousand dollars on the beach this year. Wow. And we're at what? We're right now roughly four hundred sixty-two thousand. You could do it. Which is better than two years ago for the entire year. You could do it. These ambassadors, are, they're good. They're good. They'll stop every vehicle. Hey, you got a sticker? Can I sell you one, please? Yeah, they're good. I'd like to know uh, about uh, the beach. <laughs> how, are, how are you guys going to patrol that, bring the law enforcement down to that beach on these uh, heavy-duty weekends where we ain't scared to go down there? Where they're not down there cording off parts of the beach because they can get away with it? And everything else, because it seems to me you're missing a whole lot of money just on fines. I don't see why we should even have to pay for that. The fine money alone should pay for that. And why aren't you using uh, trustees or something like that to clean them beaches on your hand pickers? Uh, using trustees? Did you have an answer? The problem with trustees is the liability issue. Um, you know, they don't they don't want to put them out to do that kind of thing because of the liability created for the county. You end up paying a prisoner a lot more if he just skins his toe than, than the actual labor it costs to actually do it. Was there another part of the question or was that the... Yes. That I first, go, go ahead and redo the question. I just got the last part. I would imagine everyone had some experience on this last weekend with the Jeepers when they were in town. Why is it getting so out of control down there? Uh, I can't answer why it's getting out of control other than the influx of the number of people and Jeeps that we've had uh, has multiplied dramatically over the last three years. Uh, I don't know how many Jeeps we had, but just just the influx of people and county out being aware of the influx. Uh, the you know, How many people were they expected? You can't you can't plan for something if you don't have any idea of what's coming. It's organized. Yeah, it's, it's the Jeep weekend is a, is not a, a really an organized event. It's a it's a national it's actually national, and it goes out. Hey, get your Jeep clubs, go have a fun day, and this is the week we're gonna say it's gonna be. But you have no idea how many people's gonna come to this beach. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers doubled over last year, and we had no idea that that was gonna happen. Couldn't get an emergency vehicle down the beach. Uh, and I, did you say something about the roping off the sections of the beach? Okay. That issue also multiplied this year versus last year. It happened last year, it happened the year before, but this year was just crazy. We, the county, road bridge and beach crew, they couldn't complete some of their jobs all week because people would come up on Monday, Tuesday, and roped off the sections of the beach. Uh, Driftwood Homeowners Association had a meeting about uh, three or four weeks ago, and it was uh, they complained about that. County uh, Judge Mark Henry asked us to put some signs up. We did. Signs are signs. We'll see what's going to happen with the sign. But I'm, I'm really hoping that next year, that if we stay ahead of it and we're strict about it, maybe we can just, as we see them starting that Monday, just pull them up. That's the best answer I can give you on that. There was a lot of nudity on the beach during this event and a lot of disgusting acts that nobody should have to witness. Will they do anything about that? Uh, I don't have to defer that question to anybody with the sheriff's office. Uh, it's something that we certainly don't. The uh, beach parking sticker doesn't have anything to do with it. And why you have a meeting with the sheriff uh, here? Uh, I'm sure Commissioner Atfeld would be happy to invite the sheriff one meeting. He was invited. Yeah, we can get invited. I would be happy to show that. Yeah, so, uh, talking with a lot of these Jeep groups during this last Jeep weekend, a lot of them said that they're going to maybe try to make that a week-long event next year. Uh, I've also heard that, now I don't know exactly I had several other groups from northern above Texas state that they were trying to get that involved. If you hear anything, can you let us know so we can let 
Is there a promoter with that, or is it just, just <laughs> word gets out, date gets set, and they all just come? No, it, first off, it's a national event. They go on their Jeep club groups on Facebook, and they post um, one thing that they have posted, because a lot of them were discussed with it this year also. Um, they're talking about the different Jeep groups meet with their group away from the crazy part, which was bottoms up or triple X. Uh, but they've been posting it on Facebook. There's a lot of them that were disgusted with it. Will you share that the, those groups or the, who, do you know who the main group was? Triple uh, X. So up. will you share that with us, and I'll reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we need to, if this is going to get that show. big, we need to uh, we need to uh, make is, pre a, a large group coming in like that. Are they not supposed to provide their own security? And their own port of office. I thought that was a, a, a Galveston County mandate. If it's not an organized event, if you don't have a promoter or organizer, who do you go to to say you got to have this? If it's on the internet, say okay, all these people with jeeps, let's show up. You don't have you don't have a single person or a single entity to go and hold accountable for a permit. Mm. Yes, ma'am. How do they get rid of the race? They got rid of the raids with the moratorium. Is that when the moratorium came in? Well, well, you had to with the raids? Yeah. Had a moratorium on the beach. But again, with the raves, did they have. I, I, that's been 20 years ago, or not quite. Did they have a, a, a promoter with that? Okay, they had, they had promoters with that. Yeah, down in they roped off the beaches. <laughs> what do you mean they roped off the beaches? They roped off the beach, they were charging the mission. Oh. And they and were asking for like cans of food or something. That's why I'm saying they have a promoter or a single person that they can down at the big okay, tell them, them that they need a permit. <laughs> yeah, for so many people. Right. They had with, with, the, with the Jeepers, it's different. It's just kind of, hey, y'all come on. I got stuck. I Oh, I bet you got stuck. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner, you mentioned uh, maybe the sheriff could come next time. Yeah, we'll, would y'all see if we could uh, absolutely make that happen? Yeah. yeah. So to wrap up, I just want to say, you know, what makes Galveston County great is is the staff that works for you all. Um, it's incredible, from the constable's office to the parks department to the road and bridge department to the regional services department to the beach parking stickers. Um, these guys and gals are incredible and um, I can't thank them enough. In the five months I've been doing this, I see the value of those folks uh, and what a, what a great job they do. So thank all of y'all for what you do. Um, I don't have anything else that uh, y'all want. We can take five minutes. If you have any general questions you want to ask, um, we can do that. Here we go. Craig? Do we know where? back in 2012 came up with Risk Map 6. And it's been sitting out there not being approved and nothing's happened to it. Do we have an update on when the FEMA Risk Map 6 might be accepted by the county or issued or anything like that? No. Lee's shaking his head, so I'm giving Lee the mic. What's that? Dude? I don't even know what risk. That's your flood. All the flood plans. Yeah. And Craig, the short answer is no. That every year they, they say we'll have it, we'll expect to approve it by June. I think this year they actually said they expect to approve it by July of this year. That's the only change that's been made. But if you're right, for over 12 years now, they have talked about updating the, the flood maps, and it hasn't, it hasn't every year it passes. And I've seen proposed new flood maps, that's but you're that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, so, and Sid, do you have anything to add? Is that just what they're No, I ask all the time. Yes, I know this is repetitious. <coughs> I've been down here over eight years. Why can't we get a clinic? Well, what, what do we need to do? I know UTMB has lots of money. Why? What What is the procedure we have to go through to get a clinic? Down here? And I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. I know that the say it again. Yeah, and the clinic was about to close, and then. Yeah. Obviously, they heard your concerns and agreed to stay open, and now who knows how long that'll be, but hopefully uh, a long time. But as far as... That's a private ownership, though. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you could move. 
I don't have an answer. I, I don't mind if trying to trying to see if we can get a, a UTMB clinic or something over here. Uh, I'm sure that you know they look at numbers and you know. A couple of years ago, two or three years ago, they sent their trailer over. Two or three years ago, they sent their trailer over once a week, and I don't I can't remember who who that was that did it. Uh, it used to be they come over on Thursdays and then that nobody would show up and that stopped. Uh, they, it wasn't you too. Might have been helpful. And, and it was just a, a, a little trailer they pull in once a week to the Justice Center or the annex. And I think he even had an had, had an appointment. I don't even know if they took walk in. So it wasn't it wasn't real efficient. Uh, and it didn't stay busy enough, so I guess they pulled it. Even if they did that, they'd have to have uh, people that were, I mean, they'd have to have them advertise that it's going to be there at certain days. They did. I never saw it. That's when I saw the trailer once, but I never advertised it. Anybody else? Ted, you got anything you want to add? Thank you, Commissioner Denner. Uh, I guess you've got one question. A lot of folks here. We've got a lot of questions too, but I'm gonna, I want to just talk about what people are interested in. You know, they're interested in, in the effect of closing rollover paths that's going to have on possible flooding on people's property and uh, further uh, cause more problems than we're already. Uh, seeing from the Gulf of Mexico trying to push from that way, but closing all over pass is going to have some impact, and I've asked the county, and I've not heard anything back, are you planning to do any type of study to see what that impact would be to this peninsula? I, I don't think there's any plans to do a study. Uh, from my understanding, the county's involvement was to help the state take the land, which I was 100% against. And that's been done, and that's that's where it sits, and that's the end of it. Yeah, I understand that, but the county is the not the driving force, but they're doing the actually taking of the property. And by closing well over pass, you will be uh, further causing or possibly causing more damage than leaving it open. So. Galveston County doesn't have a flood control district, but we, we've asked you before in the past to look at what you're doing, but you're saying that it's not you, it's the GLO, but it really is the county, and I think you guys are responsible. Okay, so noted. I'll, uh, one thing we are doing, we have a drainage study that looks like firewood to me. It's about that big and about that long. Um, it's that I'm not sure what we what we have it for, what we're going to do with it. But I, we have asked that it be updated and prioritized. And so I will, the engineer that created it, will ask them to see if, the, a, if it includes the pass, and if not, should that be a priority and should that be a part of the study. So that's a good idea. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Again, I commend you. I mean, I know it's frustrating with 87, and I appreciate your your uh, cordialness to these to the textile individuals. Please go out, spread the word, both from the house that we're in and the the uh, the, uh, the the word on 87. Thank you. All.